let's talk about some general strategies that we're going to feature in you know the, the actual problems that we're going to work through. But I just want to go over them now so you have a general overview of the kinds of things we can do on you know some problems, all problems that can help us. So again, number one, break questions into pieces. I mentioned this in the core strategy video, but I want to mention it again because it's all about breaking it down. Whole questions, trying to deal with a problem as a whole is it's indigestible. You just cannot, you know, even the best students will struggle with that. You want to break it down, take it piece by piece. Second, think with your pencil. So write everything down, draw, draw, draw. Don't do things in your head. Don't do things in your head. The best best math students aren't good because they do things in their head. They're good because they do things on paper. They work things out. And three, don't do everything in your head, right? Don't do computation in your head. If you have to use your calculator or paper and pencil, uh, just write everything down. Use all the information given. It's just a kind of a meta trick. If you work through a problem and you get an answer, but you didn't use two pieces of information in the problem, uh, there might be a problem, right? There might be an issue. Not always, but there might be. So make sure that that information is indeed superfluous uh, because most of the time, though, it's going to turn out that you made a mistake and that information is actually critical to solving the problem. Take advantage of multiple choice. Test the answers. On some problems, just take the multiple choice answers and plug them in and see which one works. That could be your best way. Instead of trying to do it in the entire problem from scratch, just take their answers and plug them in. Figure not drawn to scale. So if, if you see some geometric figure and below it, it says figure not drawn to scale, it means you can't trust the relative sizes of anything in the picture. You have to go just by what the text of the problem says. So for instance, if you have two triangles and it says figure not drawn to scale and the triangles look congruent, you can't trust the picture. They may be congruent, they might not be. Uh, if it doesn't say figure not drawn to scale, then you generally can trust the pictures. Though, of course, you never want to make judgments on sizes of things. Like, I can't look at this and say, oh, it's equilateral because it looks equilateral. Well, no, not necessarily. So just keep that in mind. Also, the answer choice, it cannot be determined from the information given. It's almost always wrong. Not always, but almost always. So if you ever see it, just be very careful before you pick it. Make sure you have a reason for picking it. If your reason is, I don't know how to do the question, you've likely fallen into a trap. Seven, eliminate choices when you can and guess if necessary. So eliminating doesn't work as well in math as it does in reading and writing, but it does have its place. There are some problems where you can eliminate choices because they don't make sense with what the problem's asking. And if you don't know where to go from there and you can get down to two or three choices, make a guess, right? It's better than not making a guess in that scenario. Use your calculator effectively. And this I mean, you know, obviously some things require a calculator, some things don't. Um, sometimes it's faster to do things on paper, but in general, just make sure you know how to use your calculator. Uh, so many times I see students, for instance, with parentheses, they, they'll put in something like 3 divided by 4 times 8, um, which actually would work in this case. But basically, just watch your PEMDAS, watch your order of operations, because things can get weird. Make sure you're using your calculator appropriately. Use brute force when necessary. Again, most questions can be solved in 30 seconds. Others, though, if you take a few minutes, you can work through the problem. That's what I mean, uh, brute force. You know, on those problems where... You have to figure out how many groups or combinations of things you've got. You can, in theory, list them all out. It just takes a while. But maybe if you've got time and that's you know a problem you want to do, you know maybe brute force might help you on those. Again, don't get bogged down. Keep moving. Keep moving. Mark problems for future review. So if you're working on a problem and you don't know what to do with it, circle it and come back. If you're working on a problem and you get an answer but you're kind of uncertain about it, instead of spending time then confirming it, circle it and come back. Just keep moving. Don't get bogged down. Is your answer reasonable? This is what I call the reasonableness criterion. Let's say you're doing some kind of percents problem and you get an answer of 1,376%. Likely you've made a mistake, right? It's very likely you've made a mistake. So your answer should be reasonable given the values in the problem, right? If you're talking about how many people, you know, you're talking about a problem where you're dividing 40 CDs between six people and you get one guy having 30 or 56 CDs, which is more than the total, you know you've probably made a mistake somewhere. Be systematic with one, two, three problems. These are those Roman numeral ones where you have to show like what must be true or could be true. Um, I'll show you some examples of those in the video, uh, in the actual problems, but just be careful with those one, two, threes. Treat them systematically. Pay attention to must be true and could be true. So must be true questions. You must pick the choice that always 100% of the time has to be true given the conditions. If you can find at least one scenario where that choice isn't true, you can't pick it. For could be true, the opposite is the case. You want to find the one that, you know, at least once works. You know, if it doesn't work a million trillion times but has one case where it could work, then it's going to be an answer that could be true. If it never works, if there's never a case 
that that would be true, then you wouldn't pick it. So just be careful. We'll see a lot of examples of those. And finally, if answer choices contain val valuables, <laughs> variables, <laughs> plug in your own numbers. So uh, this is known as plugging in. It's a technique that I think worked better with the old SAT, but does have its place occasionally in the new SAT. So we'll see examples of that in the videos. All right, so that is it for some general strategies to go along with the core strategy. Before we move into some actual problems, let's talk about what you can do in addition to try to get that 800 in the math section.